have been kind of like a privacy maxi uh, some years ago because I don't know, like it, it felt very, very close to my personal beliefs. Right now, I'm more mild. I, I, I don't really want to be maxi anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I thought that the foundations on what Monero is building uh, is like, th those are very correct thoughts. Let, let's put it this way. So I don't want people looking at my wallet. I don't want them looking at my life in general. So I'm actually, in despite of being like all the public appearances and stuff, I'm a pretty private person. So like, I don't show my wallet with euros to people on the street. So why should I do the same with my crypto? This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy focused audited and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. And by Stealth EX, an instant exchange where privacy is the top concern. Go to stealthex.io to instantly exchange between Monero and 450 plus assets without having to create an account or register and with no limits making Stealth EX a simple way to purchase Monero with crypto anonymously. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Maria Carolla, Chief Marketing Officer at Stealthy X, a non-custodial instant cryptocurrency exchange and new sponsor of the show. The two discuss Stealthy X, non-custodial KYC-free Monero on and off ramps, living near Russia during these times, why everyone has a reason to care about privacy, working with liquidity providers, regulations, incorporating in the Cayman Islands, exchanging fiat for Monero, dirty bitcoins, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Maria. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Good, Great to be here. Good morning for me. Good afternoon. Good evening for you. No, no, good afternoon. Yeah, I, I'm feeling like fresh and <laughs> nice. Sorry, it has to be so early. No, no worries, no worries. Apparently, people like the early ones for me. I think. Uh, oh, really? They like me on coffee versus you know sipping cocktails. And <laughs> oh, sipping cocktails can be more fun. I'm having my tea <laughs> here, so cheers. I love the coffee. We sell coffee. I don't know if I ever told you that. Did I ever tell you we have the this whole coffee thing going on? Oh, really? No, you haven't. Yeah, we. Uh, it's called gratuitous. We we sell fresh coffee from a farm in Guatemala, and then oh, we wow. That's cool. where the people that when you buy the coffee, you can then send a tip in Monero, and it goes directly to the workers on the farm. We went down to the farm. That is awesome. Taught them about Monero. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. And the coffee. Oh, so you actually went to the farm and talked about Monero, and yeah, that is very. Yeah, cool. we gave wow. them their own Impressive. their own uh, paper wallets, and uh, we're trying Amazing. to grow it. How did they react? They were like, what? Why? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I mean, Are they used to it now? Uh, there's, a, there's a few guys on the farm that work there that like really like got get it. You know, they're a little more technically inclined, you know, younger guys that ha that actually have iPhones. I mean, most of these guys are making like $5 a day. Uh, a lot of them. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. That's yeah. Uh, so that that's why it's a big deal. Like once they do get it, so the guys that do get it, like really appreciate it. And then I think they're they're slowly spreading word to the to the other guys. But we're, we're gonna go back down there. We we've been down there three times already. So we're gonna keep going down and like try to grow it, get more of the, because we only hooked up like twenty guys on the farm, the guys that are there. But that's still quite a number. Yeah, but the, during the harvest, there's like they bring in like a hundred workers migrant workers that come in so we're going to try to hook those people oh so like when the season is is in yeah yeah, yeah yeah and then with each new season that that's the goal that's the goal and then it just gives a use that's case that's very cool gives a use case for monero not that there aren't use cases but it like shows a a positive use case because you know monero is slightly controversial as i'm sure 
you have heard. No, I, I have heard. Yeah. <laughs> Are you drinking this coffee, by the way? Yes, I am. I'll, cool, I'll, cool. I'll send, you, I'll send you a bag. It's the, it's the least. Oh, yeah, that, that could be cool. Uh, for being our new sponsor, right? Uh, let's, oh, yeah. Let's I'm that. excited that we are. So would you like to quickly... And I love coffee, too. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. So as the little uh, kind of handle says here, my name is Maria Carolla. I'm from Steldex, and we are an instant cryptocurrency exchange that has been around for quite some years now. I'm horrible at math, and I've always been, so <laughs> I'm not going to count. We've been established in 2018, and here we are at this moment, growing and thriving and being a sponsor for Monero Talk, which is fantastic, and I'm super stoked about it. And I hope that this is going to be the partnership that will last for many more months, years, whatever time period that would be suitable for that. Uh, and yeah, so we do crypto to crypto swaps. We do fiat to crypto swaps. And this is our main product. It's in web right now. But probably next week, we're releasing a mobile application as well for Android first and then for Apple in like a week or so. So everything is prepared and we're working very hard on making it possible because, you know, that's <laughs> always quite a hassle to roll new products out and of course we support monero and all of these products and this is why i'm here probably yeah yeah yeah. i mean i'll be honest with you i never you guys have been around for a while and i've never heard yeah. of stealth it's not like you're, you're not a fly by night uh you know we've been doing our research on you uh we, we didn't want to we didn't want to link up with the wrong types of companies uh, we, you yeah, know. that's perfectly logical. Yeah, so I forget how this even started. I, I don't know if you reached out to us. Or reached, I don't remember the... Yeah, the my colleague my colleague messaged you. Actually, I messaged you first, probably it was like a year ago, but mm. I, I believe that my message got lost somewhere. And there were so many other things that we decided not to get back to it for whatever reason. I, I believe that I am to blame because I'm the chief marketing officer. Also, this is the information that I left out somehow. Uh, and yeah, this is totally my fault that we haven't been around for a Monero community as much as we would like to. So please throw all the stones my direction. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, right now, Vadim, my colleague, reached out to you and we started chatting over Twitter DMs and here we are. So we, we had a conversation. We were grilling you, asking you the tough questions. I mean, yeah, we, we, we want to make no. sure lead people down the wrong road here, but uh, I've been pleasantly surprised by, you know, uh, you know, every, all your answers and you guys are just upfront and honest. And I, I think that's the most important thing. You're not trying to pretend you're something you're not. Right. So you're, I believe that's a good thing in crypto in general and in the world. <laughs> you have to be honest to be right. trustworthy and to be like a good human being. So yes. that's, that's one of the core values. So, so let's describe the product a little. I mean, so for people that are, you know, n don't really know. So you're an instant exchange. So um... yeah, we aggregate liquidity from liquidity providers like Binance, like KuCoin, like Huobi, Uniswap, PancakeSwap for all the tokens. And we gather it together and we have the algorithm that goes there. And if you make a swap on the platform, it finds the best trade for you and performs the swap wallet to wallet. That's how it works. Right. So, so no real risk on the user side. It's not like, you know, you can... Yeah, you don't have to put the money into Steldex. That's, that's the most important point. Right. Worst case scenario, you could steal their, their trade, which wouldn't really make any sense for you because you're you just wouldn't have a business yeah, that's... started stealing. Yeah, I believe that if we did that, we wouldn't be around for so long. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so, and then it's, it's KYC AML free, right? I, I mean, you, we could get into the, the, well, it's the, mostly, the mostly KYC AML free because we still have cases when something gets hacked or something like this. So mm -hmm. there is the automatic check system and it doesn't happen very often because we don't want to be like KYC all the time, like centralized exchanges do. Uh, but in case it's like real dirty money we have to stop it because we want to be kind of 
reliable from the point of policies. Right. So if somebody brings quote unquote dirty Bitcoin and tries to swap it into Monero, they might get flagged. And at that point they might be asked. Yeah. To- yeah. If it's known to be dirty Bitcoin, right. uh, then yes. Now, the, the, there is no case where they can bring dirty Monero and try to swap it into something because, as as we know, there is no. I, way I don't think that's possible. <laughs> Monero. So anybody that's looking to swap Monero and other things, yeah. But uh, so so that's interesting. Can you give us a little insight into what where those flags come from? Is just like yeah, if you're, if how does that work? Like how does the risk assessment work? So it works. Uh, uh, like at least I'm not a specialist in KYC and AML myself, but from the general perspective, how it works that uh, exchanges, I mean, centralized exchanges have their own kind of blacklist of addresses that are known to be involved into some criminal activity or some like money laundering, whatever. And this is the common list that gets shared among all the services that work with centralized exchanges. So it comes from there, basically. Okay. Okay. And uh, is is Monero one of the more used coins on your on your system? Yeah, I believe that's like top two, actually. Okay. Like first is Bitcoin. I believe that Monero is actually above Ethereum. Oh wow. Okay. Makes sense. Makes kind of makes sense. You know, people are looking for ways to to get in in and out of Monero. There's not a lot of on ramps, off ramps, right? Uh, with Monero. Um, yeah. 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 He's yeah. always talking about so. Uh, another reason why I think it's important to help get the word out on you guys. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't know of you guys, you know, I've, I've heard of, you know, some of yeah, the that, popular, that's the sad part. Um, but yeah, I've never came across and it's not like you were, you just started up yesterday. So where, where are you guys? You want to give us some, some background into your, you know, your startup story. Is there a story there? Like how did hey. it get started? There is no like beautiful story. Like, Oh my God, we gathered and there was this kind of, like light that shed on us and all, all of that. But honestly, I believe that it's pretty common story with non-custodial exchanges that we didn't want to use centralized exchanges. And we, we is a stretch because I wasn't part of the team back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the founders and the core team, they were like, okay, we don't want to use like, minus was just starting actually. Uh, we don't want to use centralized exchanges and we want to have a service of our own obviously so we can make non-custodial exchanges possible and that was the time like 2017 2018 when there was this hype of making non-custodial wallets and exchanges for Mm -hmm. some reason like that was very trendy and many many people decided that they want to take this path including us so and i joined the team like two years later after that (laughs) so Okay. And uh, so obviously, obviously it worked. It's, it's been a success. Have you guys been seeing growth over overall through the years? Or can, Yeah, can yeah, of it? course. Uh, there is a little of a sad story because when the product was launched, uh, nobody really took care of marketing and it was not promoted as much as it could be. So there was a lot of kind of force and uh, strength put into development. They wanted to make good product, good design, good interface, all of this stuff. But marketing somehow was just hugely neglected. Mm-hmm. And because of... Actually, I lost you for a moment here. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, and so, yeah, and there was this little lag that happened. Actually, it was not little. It was probably like a year and a half that the product was developing, but nobody knew about it. And it was not kind of like social. It was not put into any articles. There was no like organic traffic or whatever marketing is supposed to do. And so because of this, if, if it wasn't there, I believe Staldex would be much more famous right now. Mm-hmm. But over the last like two years and a half, maybe it was developing in much more rapid way. And we do our best to make it more known, including in the Monero community, obviously. So, so and so, ever, yeah, they, they brought you on. It's been growing. You're, you're the, uh, well, I don't want to say that, <laughs> but, but it, yeah, there, there is a completely new approach and new team members that are amazing. And yeah, it's, it's way the, the team is strengthening and we take more people in. So yeah, there is growth obviously that we can see 
it's not like microscopic. It's actually pretty visible to the human eye. Uh, and yeah, so it's been going well for us despite the crypto winter and all of this stuff. Yeah, it, yeah, it's funny you say. So, are you seeing a drop? And you must be seeing kind of like a drop or a plateau in usage because of the crypto winter. I would imagine. Uh, there's no real change in the number of the swaps made, so it's kind of like growing, but not that rapidly as it could mm. probably. Uh, however, we do see the drop in volumes just because. Yeah. Well, people, people are people. Yeah, people are people. And also there is, like, I believe that it's going to end someday when the world gets less messy. Let's put it this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the crypto winter is going to be over and we're all going to live in a beautiful world where, like, finance is stable and crypto is known to everybody. I don't know. The, the world might be uh, further away than we think right now with what's going on, right? I, I mean... Well, when I'm old, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> do you, do you want to tell us where you live? You don't have to. Do you, do you want to give us... Uh, no, it's okay. I live in Vilnius, Lithuania, which is uh, the best of small towns, as I think. <laughs> what's uh, what's the situation over there with regards to what's going on with, you know, with Russia and Putin and mm -hmm. NATO? Is there, is there tension in the air over there? I mean, you guys are... Yeah. To the, the front yeah. line. Uh, well, I, I'm not going to say it re in regards to my work. It's probably more in regards to my life in general, because mm -hmm. like crypto is still pretty detached to everything that's going on, like as detached as it can be, because we're not centralized. So we don't have to ban users or anything like that. Uh, but for as a human being, yeah, there is tension. Definitely. There is tension towards Russian citizens, that's always been there. Like, I, I am neutral in this position. I don't like shaming people for whatever reason. And I try to stay neutral as much as I can. But yeah, it's definitely like uh, palpable. Let's put it this way. It's, it's, it's pretty bad, to be honest. Yeah. Well, like, I'm not going to move anywhere, but uh, many people decided that they want to go somewhere else. And also there are people who come from Russia who try to stay here. Uh, so like refugees or like immigrants and all of this stuff. Also people from Ukraine, obviously. Right, right, right. And you got, I mean, it's a small co country, right? We're yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's probably the smallest country in here. <laughs> no, at least that Latvia is, is kind of smaller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's when I was in the university. So it was quite some years ago. It was the, the stuff with Crimea going on. And it was kind of like, I thought that it would be the same. So there is this tension and many people are angry. And so, so people feel this kind of, I wouldn't say violence, but the kind of, I don't know, aggression probably because uh, we have to endure as well. And all of this is happening. And there are of course people from Ukraine who are suffering. And yeah, and I was studying with many people from Ukraine and right now it's worse. So I thought it was going to be the same, but right now it's much worse, actually. And nobody knows what's going to happen, too. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty scary. I can only imagine uh, being where you are, uh, so close. Oh, like we're not directly involved, but it's still very kind of geographically. Tense. You're 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 there. You're close. You're close. Yeah, yeah. Like geographically, we're very very close. Oh. And then internally, are there is there a lot of politics in the country? Like some people that are, you know, maybe not not pro Russia, but are leaning towards that side, and others that are, you know, on the NATO Ukrainian side. I I believe that there are people, but honestly, there are not many pro Russian people in Lithuania. There's never been too many because all the efforts. We are a post Soviet country. This mm -hmm. is a very important thing to know when talking about history. Uh, we're a post-Soviet country and there is a lot of, probably Lithuanians are going to hate me for like for this conversation, but <laughs> I like to be kind of uh, factual uh, about the things that I say. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, kind of g guilt and uh, shame for this period and it's called occupation. Uh, and yeah, we are not super pro-Russian in general because we feel like that this period was bad. Mm -hmm. So historically, it just happens that this pro-Russian kind of efforts, they're not, like, they're not considered good in any way, besides everything that's going on in the world.
Right, right. How about your your I'm other? I'm horrible at <laughs> explaining the country. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. You know, questions that you you obviously weren't expecting to be talking about today. But how about, how about the? No, other? I, I talk about it a lot, actually. Yeah, okay. but, but I have to be talking about it a lot because everybody's asking. Are you the other fa- or people in the company? Are are any of them also located in that region as well? Where where are most people? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I have a couple of people from here, uh, and like right now we're working remotely. You can see my amazing wallpaper at home, uh, vintage, by the way. Uh, and yeah, and some people are here. Some people are in Finland. Some people are in Estonia. So it's pretty distributed across Europe. We have even some people who decided to go to Latin America right now, but I don't think that they made it there yet <laughs> let's put it this way okay. uh also we have uh the qa guy who is in bangkok right now because like you don't have to be in the office why not choose some place warmer uh which makes perfect sense uh and yeah so the team is distributed we don't have to stay in the office but i just decided to stay here because i like it here <laughs> nice that sounded very sad. <laughs> I'm not depressed. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm not a hostage or anything. Like, I can blink <laughs> twice. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll help you out. Just let, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll come. Yeah, back. yeah. Like I, I, I will let you know. But I have a parrot, a, t- a tiny little parrot, and I can't uh, travel because of him. Because oh. of her, actually. <laughs> I can't leave her. Wow, you you are very much dedicated. That's that's very nice. Yeah, you have to be dedicated to pets. Like, <laughs> you, if you take this responsibility, then you have to carry it. Is a parrot like the the one pet you're not allowed to bring on a plane just because it's it's a parrot? You said? Yeah, I, I I don't. Yeah, it's a parrot. I don't think that they're not allowed on the okay. plane. Just, but it's be, a stress. It'd be annoying. Like, it'd be making a lot of noise. It'd be uh. Repeating. No, she's very, very quiet. Actually, she's oh, wow. right there, and she's not making any noises. Oh wow! Like it, it's it's the type that doesn't make many noises, uh-huh. uh, and I'm I'm lucky because <laughs> probably. But yeah, you have to have this like all the papers from the vet, all the documents, all the stuff, and they're tiny. Their heart is tiny. They can have a heart attack or something <laughs> like this if they if they have stress. So like that's not what we really want. That's that's very sweet. That's nice that you're. Uh, so yeah, that's not related to crypto in like any way. But... You need to get it to the point where the parrot's on your shoulder. You know, that's that's. Uh... He doesn't really like to sit on my shoulder. That's that, yeah. It's I, I would love to to be like a pirate so I can have a parrot in here, but yeah, she just doesn't want to. She starts biting me. Now, so teams distributed um, up the. The corporation, though, where are you guys incorporated? We're incorporated in Cayman Islands. Okay. Which is a lovely place, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of it's kind of known as a place where you can you know uh, freely do finan- financial things. Is that uh, I assume yeah. why yeah. that that place? It's, it makes our life easier this way. And how does it make your life easier? If you just want to explain that a little bit, like why why not you know incorporate in you know Lithuania or whatever. <laughs> Well, back when the company was incorporated, Lithuania was not super crypto. <laughs> right now, it's not super crypto either, but at least now there is some sort of regulations that can allow starting up crypto companies. And actually, many companies started up in Lithuania now. Mm-hmm. But back then, it was not friendly and you couldn't easily incorporate a business. And we wanted to have an incorporation. We wanted to have a company. So we had to find the ways around it. Okay. There's also Estonia, which is like right next door that was crypto friendly, but somehow they decided to go with Cayman Islands. I was not there, so I can't really say. <laughs> and then how about accessing? Um, you know, so obviously people in the US can can freely access stealth or is it like yeah. Uh, are, yeah, they can because we don't track like your geo position and we don't have your addresses built into the platform, so you can take any address and just go with it. We don't require you to like put, I'm from the US, so it's okay. Yeah, you can use right. it. Okay, you guys aren't asking, you're, you're not asking questions. So people- No, we're not asking, we're they not come, even asking questions. Access. Now, I know this is, you know, big in the Monero community, obviously pri- privacy, right? Um, you know, and, and trying to obfuscate uh, who who you might be, uh, you know, when, when you're using a service like this. 
is 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 there a way to access this site anonymously, like through Tor, through a, a .onion address? No, unfortunately not. We had this conversation before <laughs> when, when doing the research, and I have checked. There are some complications because of the services that we work with, so the liquidity providers are not super into that. However, that would be cool to make a separate service that is Tor accessible. I've been thinking about it, and probably if we can find a way to make it possible, that would be super cool. Okay. I, will yeah, I know, I know we had the this. conversation, and uh, but I wanted to get it out there, right? Get it out there to the people. So Yeah, of course. No, are, I, we have nothing to hide here. Okay. So you guys are thinking about it. It's something that, you know. I maybe- am thinking about it. Yeah, like probably <laughs> the rest of the team is not. But yeah, then if, if we find a correct way to do that, that would be very cool. I think that would be very cool. I- if it brings us closer to the Monero community, that's very cool in double. Yeah, I think I think it would definitely go a long way. Um, you know, pe- people really value that, and if it's not something that's impossible to do, I think you would definitely garner more uh, interest from the Monero community. Um, you know, those that are that are you know uh, un- unwilling to use a service otherwise. But oh, that's uh, understandable. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But the fact that you guys are working on it, that that's big. Um, what what yeah, what do you think it like what is the reasoning for the holdup? Like what's their their logic behind well, that? I believe that the services that have access uh, through Tor and Onion use their own liquidity. That's the point. And so they can oh. do pretty much whatever. Okay. And they wouldn't be banned or something like this. So I believe that is the main issue. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. Okay. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. Um, how about fees? How do you guys compare in, like, in, you know, to other exchanges in terms of other instant exchanges it's kind of, they're all, I don't think it's pretty much the same, to be yeah. honest, all exchange services, the, the instant exchange services are kind of alike because right. well, we do the same thing essentially. And we take something between like 0.4 to 0.6% probably. Okay. And how about limits? Like, can I go trade, you know, five dollars worth of Bitcoin into, you know, Monero? No. You can trade ten. Yeah, you can trade ten, not five. Yeah, five is a little too low. But yeah, yeah you can trade ten. And for the maximum limit, there is no maximum limit on the majority of the assets. Oh wow! There is on the ones that are taken from Uniswap and PancakeSwap because of the liquidity pools and how it works. So they can be not enough. And then it has to be stopped and like processed in several batches. So yeah, it's limited for only those assets. Besides that, no, like you can swap as much as you want. Hmm, that's that's incredible. So I guess, but I guess at some point maybe that could be like a red flag that the, that could be like a KYC AML thing. Like if they see people, you know, trading too much. I don't know. I'm just I'm throwing. Is that like something? That's I don't think that there are cases when it's like too much is the case if it's if it's something dirty like put into this too much then it can be uh but honestly i i don't remember the specific policy like if the exchange is too big Mm -hmm. then it's gonna be stopped if people trade big big sums they're okay with that and yeah we have some whales of our own we don't know them obviously but yeah they're Shout out to these people. (laughs) they stealth whales stealthy whales um yeah so with the KYC thing, so if you were to make a trade and a flag is whatever flag goes up, is it that that you're asked for KYC and can you walk away with your trade or how does that work? Like if you don't want it, you can say I want a refund. Like okay. just bring it back to my address and stop stop messing with me. Yeah, you can say that. Okay, that's that's big. That's important. All right, that's I'm sure a lot of people had that question. I, I should ask that before. Okay, that that's that's very big. Um. All right. I, I want to make sure we're, we're covering all, all the basics with, you know, instant exchange. But I think, I think we covered it. I mean, instant exchanges have been around for a while now. They're, they're pretty straightforward. 
And uh, people are just looking for one they could quote unquote trust, although you don't really need to trust them much, like we said, because you really are just using it for one trade at a time. Um, so, yeah, why has it taken you guys to this point to start kind of getting the word out to the Monero community? Like what, what where else? We wanted guys- to do it for, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Please, please continue. I where else have you guys been pushing it? Like you said, uh, you know, you've been advertising it elsewhere. Like where, other than the Monero, like who else is there other than the Monero community? Well, the Monero community is our favorite, <laughs> even though we're not to make favorites, but yeah. So we finally uh, took kind of some time, some thought that we want to do it and they will want to advertise. And there was this like, oh, there is Monero talk. We can do it with you amazing that's genius why haven't we like thought about it before uh but yeah like there are lots of effort was put into this direction but before that honestly there was so many things to kind of to just get straight and fix so we were working on like the organic traffic so like boring marketing stuff so writing articles and like fixing some stuff on the website trying to get new partners like Twitter giveaways. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> like, okay. that, that's always going to happen. Some wallets. So yeah, there was a lot of work and we're not a super big team. So yeah, it just, it took us forever. <laughs> that's, that's the honest answer. Okay. Okay. How about but your now sp- we're here. That's what. Yeah, no, you, you, you all, but like they say, all roads lead to Monero. So uh, you, you have arrived. You have arrived. That is a good saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, how about yourself? Do you are you familiar with Monero? Are you uh, are you a crypto user? I mean, obviously, you work for this company. Are you? Uh, I, I've been working Monero in crypto for-, for six years almost. So yeah, I'm familiar, full time, full time. Yeah. So I've been working with Monero community before for other projects, mm-hmm. which I don't know. I have an NDA. I love to blabber about it, but I actually have an NDA, okay. <laughs> so I'm not going to mention. Yeah, that. I don't, I don't want you to mess with that. But it was other Monero, uh, Monero related projects? No, those are like general crypto related projects, okay. but services. Yeah, those were services. Uh, and yeah, so I have been working with Monero community already, and it's been good experience. So <laughs> I want to get back to it. What's, what, are you, what are your thoughts on Monero in terms of you know, what it's trying to be digital cash, untraceable? Uh, what's what's your I am opinion? I have been kind of like a privacy maxi uh, some years ago because I don't know, like it it felt very very close to my personal beliefs. Right now, I'm more mild. I I, I don't really want to be maxi anything, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I thought that the foundations on what Monero is building uh, is. Like th- those are very correct thoughts. Let's let's put it this way. So I don't want people looking at my wallet. I don't want them looking at my life in general. So I'm actually, in despite of being like all the public appearances and stuff, I'm a pretty private person. So like I don't show my wallet with euros to people on the street. So why should I do the same with my crypto? Pretty straightforward. I just got to ask the question. Yeah, this should be common sense at this point. I don't even know why this show exists. It's like, like that's what my daughter said. She's like, Dad, we get it. It's monominous money. I mean, she's, she's only eight years old. I can't really say anonymous, but she's like, why do, why do you keep repeating yourself? We, we all understand it's digital cash. It's important. But a lot of people don't get it. Like, like what's the... the yeah, story? yeah. In, in your country, like, what's the general atmosphere? Like, I talk to everyday people all the time, you know, quote unquote, normies... I mean, at this point, everybody's heard of crypto, right? It's not like 2017 when people haven't even really like heard of heard of it. You know, maybe they, they heard it's like drug money, yeah, yeah or guns everybody, money. Everybody knows crypto, right? Elon Musk blew it up with Do- with Doge. It was on Saturday Night Live. Like everybody's heard of it. Most people, I like, even have some now because you can buy it so easily through these various apps like Robinhood. But then when you get to talking, like really talking about it and like trying to get to the root of it and why it's important and why it's disruptive and then talk about the, the cash like nature, how it's important to have cash and a free and open. So, like the eyes just start to glaze over like people don't really give a shit. Like, <laughs> like I'm just trying to make uh, the money. I want to turn, you know, a thousand dollars into a hundred thousand dollars. I don't really care that it's censorship resistant, unconfiscatable, blah, blah, blah. What's the scene like in your country? Do people actually care about these things? 
perhaps that's a great question uh i believe that there's like 80 percent of the people who don't care <laughs> unfortunately yeah. yet uh there are many people who start getting it and who start like digging into information and i'm always happy to help with that because i have many friends who started in crypto with my like little push and help because they needed it for some reason but there always needs to be a reason why they need to do it like they want to do cross-border payments they're like oh my god like that's so complicated and i'm there like oh wait I have a little thing for you. Yeah. Uh, or they want to, they just want to go into crypto and they don't know, like they want to trade or something. But there were, honestly, there were no people who just didn't have a reason, probably. So th this is uh, the thing that kind of like is stopping a little bit. Uh, however, I don't think it's, uh, many people say that like older people don't get Bitcoin and don't, don't get Monero and don't get crypto in general. Which is, I believe it's not true because my grandpa could get it, <laughs> which is amazing. He was like 70 years old and he could get why we need that. Uh, we, and he did it by himself. So he just found all the information and kind of sorted it out. Really? Uh, yeah, I, it didn't help. Yeah, I didn't help. We were not like super close, but he managed. And when he knew that I started working in crypto, he's like, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> he started like yeah, saying yeah. why we need Bitcoin and all the stuff, and I was like, whoa! Like I didn't expect that happening. And yeah, so I believe that uh, people probably, if there will be more reason to start into crypto, more people will start doing that. Mm -hmm. That's just from what I see right now. There were. Mm -hmm. Several cases when I started talking about cryptocurrency with some of my like friends or like, I don't know, not friends, but like colleagues from former colleagues from the university or like some not super close friends. And they were like, oh, yeah, that is very bad. Like my friend used to buy drugs with it or something like this. And then you start this like, oh, no, this is not for that. This is not for criminals. Like, no, no, no. Like, I work in crypto and I'm not a criminal. So could you please like separate these two things? So, yeah, there are people like this. But right now I see less of them. Yeah. What, what's kind of your your argument or response to people are like, well, it's it's why do I need private, quote unquote, private anonymous money? It's just going to be, you know, used by criminals. Well, it's usually, yeah, they usually link it. So like if I want privacy, then most probably I'm doing something wrong. And what's important is to kind of like, it's a, an illogical statement just in general, because it's important to break this kind of bond between privacy and crime. And then they start getting it because like, why would I want people on the street to look at my windows, for example, and to see what I'm doing inside of my apartment? Or why would I want other people to see what's in my wallet again? Or why would I want like strange people stalking me on Instagram? Like, I don't want that. So why, why would you want people like always looking at your transactions? And then they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> actually, probably that makes sense. It doesn't sound really criminal. <laughs> right. But it, it usually requires more effort than just like a few sentences over two minutes. It's usually like half an hour conversation, a monologue. But then if you break this bond between the two, that privacy is not for criminals, then they kind of start getting at least a part of it. I wouldn't say they start getting it right away because that would be kind of an exaggeration. But at least there is no this like direct link like, okay, private money equals like drugs, guns. Right. 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 Yeah. Unfortunately, I think there's just going to have to be some, some events that take place that show people why it's important to have, you know, digital cash, you know, and uh... yeah. And also people who had like problems with banks, for example, that get their account frozen or something like this, they start getting it more easily. Right. Like, I don't, I don't know if you saw recently, it was just the other day, I just pulled it up on my phone. Europe bans all crypto wallet services to Russia and new sanctions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it in the morning. And yeah, if this stuff happens, like, how can you use centralized services? It's the same thing, basically, as banks. They, right. they do the same thing. Right.
Yeah, they're doing they're doing it to Bitcoin though, right? Like so, uh, you know, Bitcoiners are like, well, they can't do that uh, as long as people keep it peer to peer. But practically speaking, uh, I mean, with Bitcoin, they can do it, right? As long as if they can attach your. I don't think there's gonna be like a full ban on Bitcoin anyway, because there's still lots of like instant exchanges and non custodial wallets that you can manage it yourself. Mm -hmm. However, you still have to if all the exchanges like Binance and all the other guys ban a certain country. It's still like pretty bad anyway. Yeah. Because like crypto is not for this. It's supposed to be decentralized. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm saying like this, this is a moment that where that might start to open people's eyes, like Bitcoin. All right. Uh, some people politically might think sanctions are good. It's a good tool for, for countries to use, right? Uh, it's a way to put pressure uh, on, on countries, you know, if you disagree with what their policies are and what they're doing. But it also might open people's eyes to like, wow, I, I, I didn't think you could effectively sanction crypto. But with Bitcoin... I think that was understandable, like, right away. At least when I started working for decentralized services, it was obvious to me but I believe that people who are like not full-time crypto and not like 24 hour crypto and they just heard like some terms and probably use Binance once, they don't know that centralized exchanges can do that probably. And yeah. that Bitcoin is traceable and that everything is visible. And yeah, and they still have the link that crypto is always converted to fiat at some point. So like you make some money off crypto and then you cash it out and you're happy. So this is kind of like a statement that needs to be changed as well, I guess. Yeah, like the, the article goes on. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are peer-to-peer -peer and permissionless, making it significantly more difficult for Western authorities to choke off trade facilitated through the network. This has allowed foreign criminal organizations to leverage the technology in both ransomware and schemes, even nuclear weapons financing. However, there are some limitations. Most cryptocurrencies use highly transparent public ledgers, affording their users little transaction privacy. So, I, like I said, like I think these are the the events that's that are going to take place that are going to start to open up people's eyes. You know that are you know. But again, this article sounds like something bad. So, if you want to use untraceable uh, like currencies then you want to use nuclear weapons. Like that is not right. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> In that same paragraph, they're saying, you know, it was used for ransomware and nuclear weapons financing. Um, like that doesn't sound really okay. like yeah. <laughs> nice yeah, and enjoyable. That. Yeah. I, I, I get I get some, some shit on this show for, you know, often bringing up the fact that Monero is the most, you know, the preferred crypto of the, of the dark markets and, uh, you know, uh, ransomware hackers offer a 20% discount when the ransoms play to pay to Monero. But I, I, I quote those things because I think it's important because it highlights that Monero works as intended as, as crypto is supposed to work. Is it unfortunate that it's used for nefarious things? Of course. But I think it's like kind of the best proof we have that it, it works in the way it's supposed to work. I don't know. What, what's also, your... Also, we don't have to be like this. We, we don't have to like buy nuclear weapons and ransomware. We can be nice people and still use Monero, right? Right. It's, it's a tool, right? And, uh, but it, it shows that this is the best form of the tool, right? It, it works you know, better than other ones that are trying to do it. Otherwise, people wouldn't use it for these purposes. That is logical. That doesn't mean we also cash. Them. Like ca right. ca it's cash amazing. is horrible. Like pe people say, cash is nice. Like how many things, nasty things, were uh, paid in cash for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's always the best argument, especially especially <laughs> with the older generations. That that's always the, the eye opener for them when it because yeah, I, I use it often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they attack. I have it. lots of friends of my grandmas. <laughs> yeah, like what about cash? They're like oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, well, uh, what what else? What else you want to chat about? We could uh, anything else you want to you want to bring up with regards to stealth? Things that we didn't mention that people might want to be aware of. Well, uh, good question. I, I believe that we covered all the basics, uh, how it works, and why it's here, and why do people supposedly need it? <laughs> I hope that people need it. I would be very happy actually to 
stated out loud that if Monero community has feedback to us, it would be super valuable. We love feedback and we love listening to Monero community because the people in Monero community are usually very outspoken and I love it. Not in the best way sometimes. like For not better or worse. I, yeah. But yeah, it's very valuable and we try to uh, like soak it and kind of transform it into something that can make our service better. But right now, also, you can swap XMR with over 600 assets, which I believe it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was I was very impressed by that. Uh, I even saw like Haven on there because I know there's, there's a lot of people now, you know, there's people that are in Monero that are into other privacy coins. Um, and that's why I think one of the few ways where you can on and off ramp between uh, Monero and Haven for people that are looking at Oh, really? Actually, I, I didn't know that there is a demand for it. We, we, we'd be marketing it in a more in, like, intense way. Well, I don't, I don't think there's much demand for it now. It's it's in the dumps. I don't know if you follow the project at all. It's it's had a lot of issues. It's an, it's an algorithmic stable coin. Uh, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Monero. Uh, you know, we, 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 I keep things very Monero focused here. I don't like to misdirect people. I don't want them go. I don't want to send people down to the, you know, to the next scam. Right. Uh, but it is, uh, it is an interesting project. I give them that. I like, I like what they're trying to achieve in theory. It'd be really cool to see a, a, uh, you know, a private stable coin. Uh, I don't know whether or not theoretically that's even possible. Right. And so far it's proving not really to be possible, but yeah, it, uh, it it is one of the few ways I think where you can easily obtain it without KYC and go back and forth. Yeah, we try to like put as many assets on the platform as possible. This is why we work with so many liquidity providers. We're like, let, let us bring more. Just like we want more. And right now we're also expanding our fiat offers, so there will be more uh, coins available for purchase, which is very cool as well. Because right now it's like kind of a limited number of assets that you can buy but we we'll want to make it bigger as well. So like we, we strive for like the bigger, the better. Or for buying direct with fiat, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this option as well, but right now it's like, I don't remember how many assets are available right now, but it's not like the full list, obviously. So I imagine most of your usage is, you know, crypto to crypto, right? That's like the vast majority. Most of it, yeah. There has been, when crypto was very much up, uh, there was this spike in fiat transactions because just more people decided to go into crypto and more people were interested. But usually when there is like some kind of a bear market, then it kind of like has a decline. So you have to wait for the new up to have more fiat transactions. And also this is not a very like marketed feature of ours. I believe that should it should require like more attention from our side mm. uh, to just have this uh, fiat to crypto on ramp more out there. Again, so this is the problem that we just couldn't uh, spread the word uh, loudly enough. And is it is it just with like credit cards, or how how does it the the fiat? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's debit cards and credit cards, Visa, Mastercard, and I believe that right now there is also like Apple Pay, and Google Pay. Okay, and which needs to be double checked. Right, and obviously there's there's no way to do that without KYC AML, right? The mm, there is actually there is because uh well it, you still have to use your own card with your name on it uh but you can buy if it's less than 900 dollars, you can buy it without like showing your documents okay but you're still giving up your name but all right yeah yeah okay. yeah in this is in, in this sense yeah but like no at least kyc procedure is said got it got it okay um and then the get and you could theoretically use like a prepaid card too, right? With our new provider, there is a possibility. Like I can't disclose who the new provider is yet because okay. like it's still in the works. Uh, but there is a possibility to use prepaid cards. And when we like integrate the new provider, I believe that we should put it one into one beautiful article: what you can use, what you can't use. So that people really know like what what is acceptable and what's not, and have all the information in one like in one document. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of that. All right. So theoretically, with this new provider, if that ends up working out, you would be able to uh, obtain Monero with the prepaid card, you know, gift card or credit card. Yeah, uh, at least with a prepaid pay card. Pay yeah, uh, like I haven't actually. We we're spoken. Uh, we, we have talked about it as well before. And I haven't checked what is the meaning exactly of the prepaid card. So what 
cards are acceptable because there's like million of varieties of prepaid cards. But mm -hmm. yeah, there is this option. Yeah, I think that would be quite pop. Once again, another thing that would be quite popular among the Moneroistas, uh, a way to obtain Monero without KYC AML using prepaid cards. Uh, that would be yeah, I, I see the demand on that. This is popular feature. Let, let us know when that one's added. We'll have you back on. You could you could announce it. Uh, yeah, sure. That, that's going to be awesome. And yeah, the tour thing. That definitely let us know if there's any headway made there. We could have you back on to to talk about that. I think. Like I said at the outset of this, I think the most important thing is just the fact that you guys are kind of open and honest and willing to talk about these things and not claiming to be something you're not. That's really... Yeah, it, it, I, I believe that this is, yeah, this is just the correct way of doing things in mm -hmm. business or otherwise. And we want to be integrated into the community. So why lie to the community if we want to be part of it? <laughs> that doesn't make too much sense. Yeah. And, you know, you only have like really one shot with the community because once you do get caught in this lie, you're done. And I'm especially, just like, no. Especially with the Monero community, They're, you know, you're, you're done. So uh, Monero community is good at keeping people honest, asking the hard questions. Uh, and yeah, uh, um, once again, thank you. Thank you for being a, a sponsor of the show. Greatly appreciate it. It's, it's going to help us out a lot. And thank you for, once again, being so open with us and allowing me to, you know, ask these questions publicly and being willing to, to work with us on these, on these uh, improvements. Um, of course. I, I, look, I look forward to helping to grow stealth. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, even the parrot is making noises now. <laughs> She's into that too. <laughs> Maria, any anything, anything, any last words? Where, where, you know, any any information you want to put out there? Well, first of all, we're super, super excited being the sponsor of Monero Talk, and thank you for having me on, and thank you from the team as well. They're not here, obviously, but uh, they say hi and uh, the words of gratitude as well. And hopefully, the community will kind of welcome us as well and we're always ready for your questions tough questions and not so tough questions all the time all right we'll leave it at that anybody watching this you know you could reach out to stealth to ask some questions or you know start throwing comments into this you know the this video that we're going to post um or I, elsewhere where else can what's the best way for people to to get in touch with you guys and ask their questions. Uh, sure. You, you can drop by our Twitter. So it's at Steldex. Uh, what is this called in English? <laughs> I forgot. Like the, the one that is the lower. Underscore? Uh, Underscore? Yes. Thank okay. you. This is not my native language. <laughs> so okay. I forget words sometimes. Uh, and IO. And also you can find us on Telegram. Uh, we have a, a Telegram chat where I'm always um, present. So you can tag me uh, at Kaiser, whatever, and you can find me and ask all the questions directly. Also, I have my own Twitter uh, at CryptoBanshi, not because I scream all the time. Uh, and also you can reach out to our support, support at StealthX.io, and they will be ready for your questions as well. All right. Or like I said, throw the comments in the, in the YouTube, uh, this way other people watching it can, can see and we'll respond there. And get yeah, sure. We're, we're going to be there as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maria, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy, enjoy your afternoon, evening, and I'll get my thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you have a great day. hope you're not too tired to start. No, to start no, it's great. I, I like doing these morning ones. Gets me going. Thank you, Maria. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to monerotalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.